हरि ओम स्टार्ट विद द प्रेयर ओम सहना सहन भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिषा वह शांति 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 चिन्मय व्यापत्सर्वलोक्यम सचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम Last class we talked about how a mumutsu can transform slowly into jignasu. In fact, this is the biggest br- long break because the biggest jump in wall because everybody doesn't think that knowledge is the basis for realization. And if you look at the the society around, says no. you follow this religion you go to heaven or you follow the bhakti marga you go to heaven or you do all this kali yuga all you need to do is the prayers singing and you reach the highest but scripture is very clear that only way to is gnanam and to approach a proper teacher is another requirement and we just mentioned approach a teacher who is sotriyam and brahmanishtam Who is established in Brahman and who knows how? So we can classify. In fact, Shankara classifies. There are three types of teachers. One is Sotriyam and Brahmanishtam, the one who knows scriptures and also fully established that I am Aham Brahma must be in the knowledge, firmly abiding in the knowledge. That's the highest teacher. And if one approach that kind of teacher. knowledge definitely will come the second type of teacher is may not be brahmanishta but he is sotriyam he has studied and understood by a, a teacher who himself studied from the that is from a sampradaya a methodology of teaching is given where he learns from a teacher not only how to teach but also how to communicate the knowledge that he has gained that is also part of being a sotriyam so he is a sotriyam so he knows how to teach but he may not be brahmanishta he may not be firmly abiding in the knowledge of i am brahman he is a second type of teacher the third type of teacher is he is not a sotriyam but he is a brahmanishta he has not studied the scriptures but he understood that what is the nature of brahman and he has realized but he may not know how to teach now of these three teachers the best teacher is one who is sotriyam and brahmanishta the second best is the second one where he is sotriyam and he may not be brahmanishta but if i have a firm belief that he my teacher is brahmanishta i can realize whether the teacher realized or not well the third one is one who is brahmanishta but not sotriyam put long namaskaram to him but there is no way you can learn from him so therefore it is not the that he is maybe a mahatma by serving him essentially you will gain the benefit of it but you may not be able to learn the scriptural teaching from him which is required for the knowledge so therefore of these three teachers the one is the best now the question is how am i going to find all these teachers in this modern world who is we don't know who is certified teacher and who is not certified so when i was listening in in states you know newly exposed to this teaching i was sitting in front of swami chinmayan ji and one american lady was asking this question at that time all sorts of teachers were coming to united states and some in fact a, a married his own secretary or something young boy and some teachers had almost like 14 cadillacs and all that i don't want to mention the names but there are like that all sides of teachers so this lady asked a genuine question swami ji how do we why is india sending all sorts of these teachers 
why India doesn't so send, why can't it send only a certified, this is the right teacher and not the other teachers? Because we are all getting confused because all sorts of teachers are claiming they are all gurus and they are all the big uh, people. There is one person who says if you touch it he will realize and all that, he will reach all sorts of things. And knowledge doesn't come by touching. If Krishna would have taught by touching Arjuna, he would have taught. He told 18 chapters of there. So it's not like that. Why India doesn't send only a qualified teacher? Swamiji gave a very beautiful answer. He says, when you go to a grocery store, so what do you do? You go and pick up intelligently what you need. You don't complain that why the shop, why the manager or shop is selling all sorts of things that you don't need. He's catering to different people's needs. That is his business. But your business is intelligently go and select and read the ingredients and select what you really need. And in case you picked up the wrong one, if it is America, if you return it, they will give you back money. In India, you suffer it. But next time you are more intelligent, now you have gained some knowledge from that experience and now you are more careful in selecting what you need. Implication is, when I approach a teacher, I had to use my intelligence to see that he is my teacher to gain. You cannot just say everybody is my guru. Then how do I know who is real guru? Because I don't know who is, but we said we can know whether it's Sutrim or not. But we don't know who is really the Brahmanishta or not. Hence Shankara says in the Vika Chodavani, Manushyattvam, Mumutshuttvam, Mahapurusha Samsrayam, Dharlabam, Traimi Vaitatu, Daivanu Guruvahetukam. It's only by the grace of God you are led to appropriate teacher. Manushyattvam, being born as a human being. Mumukshuttam, desire to get liberated. And Mahapurusha Samsrayam, association with the great souls. He is Durlabam, Trayami, where these three things are difficult indeed. So being born as a human being is difficult. Among all the living of the life forms. Once you are born, if you waste your time, as we mentioned, says Buddhiyavihana, Buddhiyavihana, If you don't use the Buddhi, you are as good as animal only. So intelligent has to be used to properly tune, retune, or readjust, or redirect my mind and my pursuits in life towards the moksha. So the mumutsuttam, and even if I direct, I should be lucky enough to find appropriate teacher. And that comes because of the grace of God only. So that is what grace of God is a graceful way of saying that it's because of my previous merits of in previous lives, I will be led to appropriate teacher. A teacher may not be correct, but that is what the teaching is required at that time for me to use intelligence better in order for me to approach a better teacher. So all this is part of my growing up. Now we address now what kind of qualifications the student should have. Not only the humility in approaching a teacher, but his mind should be prepared because for every knowledge there are prerequisites. Just as for chemistry for, for 10th standard, 9th standard is a prerequisite. Similarly, for every knowledge there is a requirement, a mental evolution is a requirement. And this is called sadhana chatushtayam, the fourfold qualifications of an individual. So in the, uh, from mumutsu to jignasu to transfer, the question is whether I have the required qualifications to transfer myself from the desiring to get liberation one thing but gaining the knowledge or approaching approach knowledge is another thing i should be qualified to receive the knowledge even if the teacher gives and what are the necessary qualifications in the in the in the brahma sutra the first brahma sutra says atato brahma jignasa then therefore inquire into the knowledge. Then therefore into the knowledge of Brahman. So Jignasa, 
the mumuchu has become has to become a jignasu jnanam ichasu so therefore now therefore enquire into brahman so what is then therefore what does then means then means after acquiring appropriate qualifications then you enquire into the nature of brahman that is how shankara interprets for athato brahma jignasa so what are the qualifications these are fourfold qualifications are called sadhana chatushtayam this is the viveka the vairagya samadhi shakka sampatti and mukshutvam these are the four qualifications first is discrimination viveka vairagya dispassion and the second one is the samadhi shakka sampatti involves a discipline and mukshutvam is desire for liberation we call it four d's the discrimination dispassion discipline and desire for liberation these four requirements these four qualifications are required to enter into the field of the adhyatmika study this is one aspect now we look at each aspect now viveka viveka means a discrimination what should i discriminate what is the discrimination means shankara defines discrimination is nitya anitya vastu viveka nitya anitya vastu viveka discrimination of what is nityam nitya means eternal and anityam what is ephemeral or what is that is transitory and vastu of that objects so every object or all object there is a mixture of nityam and anityam and i should be able to discriminate and separate what is nityam in the anityam that discriminative capability is required for knowledge to take place now remember in in, in our uh, hindu scriptures they always put the the uh, heavenly what do you call hamsa hamsa is span 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 is is pictureized as a knowledge because it has a discriminative capability to differentiate the milk and the water and take only the milk in the mixture of milk and water so now what kind so that is the knowledge that we need and the example is is where there always a mixture first and therefore we have to discriminate so what kind of mixture it is as we know there are different types of mixtures so you know we eat some mixture right so what is the mixture there it is a it is a mechanical mixture or a physical mixture where you put this and you put that and all put together and make a chow chow and that is a mixture the physical mixture can be physically separated you don't need an intellect for that much but this is nitya anitya vastu vivekam vivekam is intelligently separate this how do i intelligently separate this nityam and anityam let's take simple example i have say a golden ring in my hand now what i have i have only one ring and a golden ring now how there is a disc, there are one which is nityam in this and there is anityam in that and i have to use intelligence to discriminate what is nityam and what is anityam so what is nityam and what is anityam the ring is anityam the gold is nityam why is that because from gold it came by gold it is sustained into gold it goes bad the gold is always there the ring is only a temporary form of that gold and gold was before a ring before and it may become a bracelet or a bangle some later but temporarily now it is in the form of a ring now we have two things ring and a gold two nouns right so ring and a gold but which is what here is it a ring or is a gold if you say it is a ring say no it's gold only so if it is a gold why am i calling it a ring 
but is ring also is it a ring or a gold we have a problem oh it is a golden ring it's another problem why we have made gold into an adjective for a ring but what is noun or substantive it's called in english substantive substantive is that which is a noun real noun that should not change the other one is only adjective that qualifies but real substantive is substance is only gold not ring so it should be ringly gold because ring is only a form temporary and gold is its value depends on the gold not depends on the ring shape therefore i have to use a discriminative intellect to differentiate what is really real another is transactionally real gold ring is different from a bangle is different from a bracelet i have no confusion there but everything is only one gold i see oneness at the same time i see plurality so i had to use a proper discrimination when i look at the world i use same way in the golden ring it's very easy but in the case of, of the world i had to discriminate what is that nityam and anityam what is eternally present and what is ephemerally present or what is transitory how am i going to do that that's why it requires a very subtle intellect where the brahman remember when i say brahman brahman is infiniteness so there cannot be anything other than brahman by definition because brahman is infinite if there is something other than brahman brahman ceases to be brahman because brahman cannot be infinite anymore purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva sushyate this is sloka in the upanishad so one of the most beautiful sloka and sages is the whole vedanta is packed there we'll go into that analysis it says purnam idam idam means this 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 the whole isha vasya vidam so whole universe is idam and that is purnam that means it is infinite that means infinite means it is brahman because anything other than brahman there is nothing else infinite therefore the world is infinite that means world is nothing but brahman and krishna says brahma arpanam brahma havi brahma agnyo brahma naudam brahma ivatena gantavyam brahma karma samadhina so this while doing yagna or the grahastha is doing a homam says brahma arpanam arpanam is a ladle is brahman ladle is brahman is infiniteness how can that be because in every object there are two things one is nityam and another is anityam in the ring there are two things one is the gold another is the ring form similarly the whole world is consisting of two things one is the brahman another is the name and the form so i had to use a very subtle intellect to differentiate and look at the world as i look at the world i see should recognize the brahman veil at the same time transacting in the world just as i transact with the ring and the bangle and the necklace taking their names and forms as real as though during the transactions recognizing they are all one and the same goal In the same way, when I am transacting in the world, recognize that it is only Brahman. But while transacting, he is different, she is different, chair is different, carpet is different. The difference is only in the names and forms. Just as the ring is different from a bangle, is different from a bracelet. That discriminative capability is required when the teaching takes place. That is really the basic. we'll analyze each one like that and if once that qualifications are met then the student is qualified for becoming a jignyasu enquiring into the nature of brahma we'll stop here at this time om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate 
Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om